Okay, we'll do a short uh, segment here on X3D Edit development and also testing. How do we make changes in X3D Edit and uh, do updates? What's going on behind the scenes as we improve some of these things? First off, our uh, X3D Edit uh, is open source and it is in version control. And so uh, when we look at the uh, downloads section of the home page, it tells you the different ways of getting it, points out that you do need Java installed, and that uh, uh, if you are a developer, you probably want to use the NetBeans version since uh, uh, NetBeans is where the environment we're developing in. And X3D Edit also serves as a plugin to NetBeans so you can see your work. And then uh, at the very end of this download section, right here, there's a, a note on our version control source and how you could pull down a copy and start playing with the version control yourself. We uh, do have it on SourceForge, which is uh, probably the biggest uh, site for uh, open source projects. And we've got it set up so that uh, for developers, for software developers, people who do Java, uh, coding and compilation, they can uh, update it. So to update it, you can, uh, you can do that within uh, NetBeans itself. If you have a project, you can do a uh, subversion update like this. Or you can uh, work externally with some other tool if you want. So if we're working externally, I've got it installed on my, my home system right here and there are a few subsidiary tools so what I usually do is do an update subversion update is uh, you know the probably the most popular version control system right now and when we do that we can see there were a bunch of files added up on SourceForge here's the current build in fact I just came from uh, uh, Mike Bailey's office upstairs where he said hey yeah I've uh, finished an important new uh, piece of capability. Uh, you know he's been working on the URL list editor recently. Well, he's uh, put some uh, code under the hood that when you open this, it goes to check. It goes to check to see if each of your URLs is uh, a proper resource by reaching out in, into the file directory locally or over the internet to see uh, if something's there. And that way we think you could have immediate visual feedback that your uh, URLs were good and also would let you launch them. So, so Mike's added this new feature to check and uh, reportedly it's supposed to uh, come up just as before with the URLs listed one at a time and they'd be black if uh, it hadn't been able to get a response yet. It'll be green if it finds it and it'll be red if it couldn't find it, if uh, this, the host wasn't reachable or if uh, the HTTP host says, uh, so sorry, your resource is not found. Okay, uh, so let's check it out. Now that I've done the update, we can go into uh, NetBeans and I've got uh, X3D Edit set up as my default project. So I can just build and compile. If you want the uh, detailed instructions on how to do this, well, there, uh, uh, there's a short set on the README page there are plenty of tutorials around about X3D Edit. If, uh, if you wanted to do that because you were creating your own code or just because you wanted to help uh, debug some of the issues of the day, uh, that's fine. Uh, again, it's available by an anonymous checkout. If uh, you're a contributor, we'd probably want to get you an account up on SourceForge so you could uh, start checking things in. Okay, so it'll uh, take a moment to come, uh, come up. It is a pretty impressive code base. There is a lot of stuff here. And so it's uh, maybe not for the faint of heart, but, uh, but it works. And, and each change is quite incremental. Whenever Mike's making uh, updates, I'm testing them. And then uh, about every week, we'll roll an update and, and let folks like uh, students in class here or anybody out on the big web uh, go ahead and test them. Okay, so let's look at the URL editor and see if it changes. Here is uh, uh, 
a node that has a URL. Okay, extern proto declare is looking for different uh, prototype files. And so let's check that out. And let's edit this element and see what comes up. And look at that, it didn't take long to uh, do the check and turn green. These uh, two resources uh, came up uh, green right before the panel even loaded. Okay, The first one we'd sort of expect, it's right in the same directory. The second one, okay, we've got a good network connection today. And that was pretty handy. Uh, uh, let's put in a bogus one. Here is a bad link. Okay, clearly that's a bad uh, uh, URL address, and sure enough, it, it, just by entering it, it did the check already. We didn't have to close it and open it. So it looks like a pretty, pretty darn good feature here, and so great. So uh, let's use that today. What else do we do? Uh, uh, given that we have uh, uh, issues and we might want to fix them, we do keep a... Uh, bug tracker. Okay, so uh, if somebody finds a problem and wants to tell us about it, we're happy to help. And uh, on, on the, uh, let me get back to the top of the page here. Here we go. On the X3D Edit uh, homepage, we have a section called Issue Tracking. Okay, and so if we go there, We'll see that, okay, we have a bug list that uh, doesn't get used too much. We'll keep it open and see if it makes sense. Uh, we also have an issue tracker right here. We also list links to issue trackers for XJ3D, the 3D browser that we've embedded, and also NetBeans itself. So uh, multiple places to send bugs. You don't have to understand any of this stuff. You can just send it to our bug developers list or go here. So we're using uh, Bugzilla, yet another free open source tool. And if we want to uh, look at bugs, well I guess we could just search here. Why don't we search for all the bugs with X3D edit on them. And there we go. Plenty of them. 128, which seems like a lot, and I guess is a lot until you compare it to all the ones we fixed. Besides using it as bugs, it's also our to-do list, so we'll prioritize which uh, problems are most important, and this is how we can keep track of what we, uh, we care about. This is also how other people can look over our shoulder and see how well we're doing. Okay, so if we look at this guy, uh, what else can we say? Well on these editors, if we uh, type edit, this is pretty nice. We get a protocol, a path, and a, uh, uh, a local file chooser if we want it, where we can uh, pull up a file. Uh, and I think we still have some more improvement we could do here. Since these are prototypes, we would want to list uh, other values. So I think what we'll do is probably put another section here where we would either put the proto or uh, other resource. And we'll probably put a pound sign in there since uh, into the interface so that you have a little pull down menu just like you do here on this end. We'll put another pull down menu on the other side where maybe it's actually looking into the file and finding out where are the prototypes, where are the viewpoints for an inline file, where are the HTML bookmarks. So uh, work continues. Let's uh, enter a bug for that. How do we do that? You would have to be a, a member of, of this bug server to enter a bug, but uh, that's fine. You can just sign up. If you want to track a bug, you can just ask for an account and you'll be granted one. And so we'll say uh, summary the URL list editor. We can see that we had some, uh, I entered some already. 
let's have let's enter one for uh, add a uh, section for pound resource name and instead of a section we'll call it a text area so that uh, other resources can be better identified and checked. I'll give a few examples now uh, for extern proto declare you'd want a proto declare name for a uh, uh, inline or anchor you'd want a uh, viewpoint name. Since we have the option when we load a scene not only to load the scene but to go to a viewpoint in the scene is our initial place. And I guess to be thorough we could even add uh, the capability for uh, HTML files if we're linking to those in an anchor that we would uh, have a, a bookmark. <laughs> Okay, now what I did here was select the component X3D Edit 3.2 that immediately prompted us with uh, who's in charge of it. If there were anybody else that want to track, we, we could add them. Uh, if we needed a picture added of an example of how this would look, uh, we could insert that. If there was a problem with an exception trace or some example code or some offending uh, X3D or, or even an X3D file itself we could be pasting or attaching that. Boom presto this is now on our database, bug database. It's available via the ma mail server and Mike Bailey has some nice email from the server now. Hey don't forget to put this in. And I'll go well of course we just talked about it. Okay there we go. So what's left? Well just in the we haven't done extern proto yet, uh, but just in the case of going through this, I noticed that we didn't put in the optional proto name, so I will use the file editor to do that. So great, that was pretty painless, easier than going way to the right hand side of a plain text file. and. Uh, note that we have two other things here. Launch lets us uh, launch it in a web browser and load or open. Open lets us, uh, I think we're going to rename this to be the load button, lets us put it right into X3D. So that would be a way to get something uh, across the web and check on it to make sure it was what you wanted. Okay, uh, what's left in development? Well, just in a scene development, since I've made a change to this scene and it is checked in, I'm going to uh, revise it to say it was modified today. We talked earlier about version control and how we do it in NetBeans. Well, guess what? Since X3D Edit is made from NetBeans, the same capabilities are right here inside of X3D Edit. So what I can do now is since I'm working on a version control code base, I can go to the subversion menu. I'm clicking right on the tab here uh, for this file and say, oh yes, I want to commit or update. Let's see, it's not showing me commit. Why is that? Oh, because I didn't save it. Let's save it. And now check, can I commit this change? Yes, it's letting me do that. If we go up here, uh, I guess we didn't expose that. How about, uh, uh, Rich, please add that to the notes for today. Let's add the uh, version control menus to the top level menus in X3D Edit. In any case, before I commit this one, let's just do a diff. This is a handy feature, and sure enough, X3D Edit is showing us what changes did I make to the file. And I can go through line by line here, and it will tell me uh, what the changes are. We go, okay, yep, that worked. I'm getting what I wanted, so therefore I will commit it. 
either from the diff menu or from the file itself. Let's do the regular way from the file. Uh, subversion, commit, and the change summary was add prototype name to extern proto declare URL values. So that somebody who's uh, trudging through the changes trying to figure out what happened to this, why did it break, could say, well, this was the intent each time and follow. Okay, so X3D Edit is now committing, uh, talking to the SourceForge server. Uh, since I've done this before, it remembered my password. And uh, shortly we should even see, yep, the uh, color of the tab changed from blue, indicating modified, to black, indicating it's all set again. Okay, so there's a, a rapid tour through the development features either of X3DEdit itself as a software tool or X3DEdit for doing your own content development in version control and making changes. Hope you found that helpful. Okay, we have one more thing to say about version control. If that seemed uh, uh, sensible but maybe hard to remember, well, more good news, we have uh, the help embedded in X3DEdit. So if we pull up the, head, the help page, we can open up this section right here, ID Basics, and there we go, right there, version control and file history, and we get the um, all the details on how to do it. Okay, and you, including using either CBS or Subversion, which is what we've been done, or Mercurial, which is a fairly new, uh, different version control system. Okay, so plenty of support right in there for development built into extra data.